ghosts. Hollywood Undead Notes from the Underground Nation. We already did one piece of crap. Let's do another one. Now, wait a second. Wait a second, tough to me, 10th grader, who's about to spout his mouth out about how Hollywood Undead has all these fans. Black Veil Brides, Bring Me the Horizon, they have all these fans. We shouldn't be talking bad about them because they have tons of thousands and millions and trillions and billions and zillions and quintillions of fans. Listen, this is my opinion. Just like you have yours opinion, yours opinion, and just like I have apparently terrible speaking patterns and bad grammar, it's mine. You have yours. Let's agree to disagree here and move on. I don't give two craps how many fans that they have because there are bands out there that have probably 300 to 500 fans that I find better than your band that has tens to 20,000s of fans. Is that just because I'm stupid? No. It's because I listen and find things to be better than what you've listened and find things you know, to be better. So let's just agree to disagree. Notes from the Underground by Hollywood Undead. I'm getting off course before I even start this damn thing, probably because I don't really want to talk about it all that much because I couldn't even listen to this piece of shit. Yeah, this is absolute rubbish. Now remember, if you guys remember, I think it was uh, 2011, I actually touched base on a Hollywood Undead track called Hear Me Now, and I found it to be one of the most atrocious pieces of nonsense that I had heard in a long time while they somehow found a way in order to uh, make it worse. First off, this is not an underground band, so this being called Notes from the Underground, unless they're saying that they are literally from sewers, that's where they live. Uh, they are uh, pulling a bane, and they are living in the sewers, underneath the ground, underneath the uh, cities of America, then, um, well, that's first off pretty damn disgusting. They should probably take a shower. And secondly, this is a complete misnomer of a title that's supposed to be some sort of, you know, play on the underground status idea, because they're definitely not underground. They definitely do have fans. They definitely do sell records, and I still don't know why. Uh, this is an album that really kind of just showcases what Hollywood Undead's all about. They are a rap rock group that is supposed to be uh, blending in styles of alternative and metal along with rap and hip hop. Uh, with dance themes, with dance anthems and stuff like that, that's for some strange reason just reminds me of something that I would hear on this like lame ass new incantation of Warp Tour that comes around every single year and draws a bunch of little tall and tiny little children and just sucks. It isn't the way that it used to be, but then again, that just makes me sound like I'm some old fart. Maybe I am some old fart. Maybe that's what the problem here is. I'm not 13 and doing these reviews. I'm actually double that age. I don't really know. I don't really care because, well, let's face it, I think that I've done this thing uh, pretty well now for a couple of years, so let's talk about this. Um, many, many different members. Once again, it's almost like Slipknot decided that they were going to adapt a rap sound and try it. I would listen to Slipknot a thousand times over aside from this. And coming from the guy who's... One of his first videos was a bash video, I guess, of, of Slipknot. That really says a lot. Uh, now, there's one thing that I will say. These guys all rap while also playing their instruments. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. That's something really to be proud of. That's something really that just makes them unique. Because, you know, they're actually playing their instruments and singing at the same time. Like every other goddamn band in America does. Wow, that really, truly does break the mold. Hot damn, I wish I would have thought of that and started a band. If only I was, you know, just a little bit talented. If only my talent was, you know, both pushing little buttons on a key in a repetitive fashion and singing terrible lyrics, as opposed to spouting off my mouth about albums, I would just be a billionaire, as opposed to not. Oh, man, if that's all it took, then God damn it, I would have wrote the penis song ten years ago and would have been hugely successful. <sighs> This stuff makes me actually want to listen to Limp Biscuit. Yeah, Gold Cobra, Chocolate Starfish, and the Hot Dog Flavored Water, the unquestionable truth, you know, $3 bill, y'all, anything. I would listen to Fred Durst for 10 fucking summers uh, before I would listen to this again. This is absolutely pathetic. These lyrics are just, they're all over the place. They're trying to sit, tell this message about how, oh, if you don't like me, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. I'm used to hearing this already. In this age of haters make me famous, I understand that by being a hater myself, I'm giving these guys attention, I'm making them famous, I'm kind of going in with it, uh, you know. It's a nice philosophy uh, by bare-bones idealism, 
mainly because it's showcasing the fact that these guys don't care. Uh, they don't care what people say if they give them negative press because it's shooting them straight to the top. They're getting a lot of attention, and that seems to be uh, how it happens these days. You really have to do something poor or do something so incredibly excellent that nobody can replicate it, duplicate it, or potentially do it themselves uh, in order to garner uh, a little bit of acclaim in America and abroad. So, you know, in a way, this is haters make me famous philosophy does actually hold a little bit of a candle. It's just kind of the, the wrong kind of candle. It's a negative candle, you know? You know, what you should really be thirsting for, what really should be thirsted for is universal acclaim as opposed to minor acclaim that is turned into major acclaim because it's in the hands of one particular demographic. Now, with this album and with this stuff, I can kind of understand the allure uh, also considering I have touched bass and listened to a whole bunch of other crap in my day, because it has a melody and a beat that you can dance to, it has, you know, foul language in which kids can snicker at, you know, it gives them little taglines that they can use whenever they go to school and potentially get bullied by Butch Billy Bobby Boner blasting 9th grade, 12th grade, 11th grader who's repeated 17 times and is 34 years old, and, you know, there you go. It is something that gives them a little bit of a uh, an arsenal or ammo that they can use whenever these things happen, or hopefully hopes to unify everybody together. That way they can all listen to the same music and live in this absolutely mediocre harmony for all of eternity. Uh, whenever I listen to this, the only thing I could think about is the song Blackout by Breathe Carolina, which was on a, I think, a Now or something like that that I was forced to listen to in the store. And the very first thought I had in my mind was, Damn, compared to this, that song by Breathe Carolina sounds fucking amazing. It sounds like goddamn Beethoven or Pavarotti or, you know, it, it, it sounds like Elvis Presley just decided to, like, make love to the Beatles to make potentially the greatest song of all time compared to this crap. Hell, compared to this crap, the penis song sounds pretty damn alluring as an idea for a way to become popular. It's just something where... Hey, there's a beat you can dance to right there. The substance of this is very, very questionable, and you know what, whenever I have to question substance, me, you know, the guy that listens to bands like Anal Cunt, Prosthetic Cunt, things like this, you know, that involve the word cunt, and then, you know, crotch duster, then you really have to wonder. And the reason for it is because, you know, these other bands really don't take themselves all that seriously, they're very quirky, and I understand these other bands do too, there's really a very piss poor argument and bridle within that, uh, regarding that whole concept. Uh, but whenever you listen to the music, the way in which it's directly represented, the way in which it's kind of shouted at you, it's kind of given uh, absolutely, it gives you like no room to breathe, it kind of claustrophobes you, uh, really makes you wonder whether or not they don't take themselves that seriously, or if that direct nature is just, you know, actual seriousness, like if this is something that they actually literally feel every so often. You know, whenever uh, Mindless Self-Indulgence first came forth and really kind of broke through and kind of introduced some of these ideas a little bit more to the mainstream of the current society of teenagers that are in America and abroad today. It was kind of, it, it was a unique idea. It was something that was only heard in the underground and it was something that they brought to surface. Uh, and ever since then, uh, if you thought mindless self-indulgence was bad, it's only deg uh, degraded itself further and further and further as time has gone on. Literally, mindless self-indulgence has become one of the forefront frontrunners for these styles of band and still remains to be one of the bands that actually has that, uh, that little bit of a humorous quality to them where they don't take themselves that seriously, where they kind of understand the name of the game. Uh, some of these guys, I really literally think, are making these anthems uh, that way children have a way to fight back, you know, and to kind of breed this sort of contempt for the conventional. And the sad thing about it is, is that this idea has not worked because they themselves have become the conventional. So their idea of having contempt for the conventional has now become con uh, self-contempt, if you really want to look at it from a deep psychological pr uh, perspective. And that in itself is unhealthy. Now, listening to a full album of this is probably what has caused numerous, numerous people from numerous countries uh, to be tortured over the course of multiple generations. If you listened to this in a Muir back-to-back, -back, there's a very good chance that you may, in a blind you know, listening test, instead of a blind taste test, pick out a Muir simply because they remind you of Limp Bizkit. These guys, I'll be honest with you, they remind me of a group of guys that are trying and listen to a lot of the Beastie Boys in the late 80s and in the 90s and thought to themselves, hey, that's a great idea, let's kind of evolve that. The problem is, is that they have failed at doing that miserably, they have failed at kind of enhancing what Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit has done miserably, they have crafted their own thing, but their own thing sucks. 
there is just there's limited allure to this. I mean, that whole danceable party thing. I, how many how many 15 year olds do you know that are hosting a rave in their basement that are listening to Hollywood Undead, Black Veil Brides, and all this other bullshit and just absolutely having the time of their lives? This isn't the underground punk scene anymore where you're having these shows that are literally done in basements, that are literally done in garages, that are literally done wherever they could do it, whether it's at like the foot of their mom's bed or something like that, just to piss her off. This isn't happening anymore. This movement is done. This is stuff that's selling out arenas. This is stuff that's coming to small little locales perhaps in a town near you, and the infection is spreading. Literally, you don't have to worry about the zombie apocalypse. You have to worry about the mediocre music apocalypse that's already upon us. I don't care how many fans this band has. I don't care how many people they have attracted with this atrocious br uh, brand of rap rock, rap metal, rap whatever, dance rock, rap, crap, flap, slap. I will not be one of them. I will not be somebody who will take up the good cause of spreading Hollywood undead to the masses. I will instead beseech upon you the idea that you look somewhere else for your music. Yeah. I I could do all sorts of fancy things for the Black Bell Brides because they actually had a member that possessed talent. Their guitar player is very, very well talented. These guys, on the other hand, no. Not so much. And the one guy decided to do his own solo thing, Deuce or whatever the hell his name was, I didn't touch that for a reason. I will probably never touch these guys again for a reason. Blah. Crap. Absolute garbage. Can't get through more than three tracks at a time without wanting to take out a gun and start killing people. But I won't. The reason why I won't is because of all the things that people say. He just did it for attention. He just did it for his 15 minutes of fame. And it goes back to the whole idea that you have to do something really, 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 really negative in this world in order to get attention. And I really don't want that kind of attention because usually whenever you get that kind of attention, it involves killing yourself too. And I kind of like it here. I kind of like pissing you all off. I kind of like pissing off little tiny children. Why is that? Because I'm a bully? Put them up? No. Because I don't even need to talk to any of you guys in order to piss you off. That's kind of the fun part of the internet. Peace.